Hi, welcome back to Do Your Damn Self. We've been having some trouble with our toilet tank refilling. It's been stuttering, kicking on and off, and uh, sometimes it just doesn't fill up at all until you reach in and give the valve a good thump. So what's happening there is the valve itself is getting stuck and uh, it's really easy to change out. It's not a big deal at all. What we need to do it is a uh, real simple tools here. We need the valve itself, got it from Lowe's. We got some silicone tape with the threads, some silicone grease. I'll show you how to use this in a minute. It's wonderful, you'll see. And other really simple tools, a sponge. We need to soak up all the water that's remained inside the tank here. And something to let the water fall into, because once you re remove the old valve, there's gonna be a big open hole down there that the water is going to drain out of. So we need to take out as much water from the tank as possible to avoid making a really big mess inside your bathroom. I'll show you how to do all this stuff and more and save you a lot of money. All this stuff cost me about 20 bucks and uh, I guarantee a plumber would come out and fix this in a flash for you, but charge you about 200 bucks. So good way to save some money and to do it your damn self. Watch and see. This right here is the valve you want to turn off. This supplies water to your toilet right here. This is the bottom of what we're going to be replacing today, right here. These modern switches right here, all you need to do is give them a half turn like that and it is shut off. Old fashioned ones need to be wound down and, uh, and tightened up. Sometimes they fail. If you have old ones like that that will not shut off, you may need to go out to your main water valve outside your house and turn it off there. Otherwise you'll have a big, big mess in here. That's all you should need to do to turn it off. Let's test it out and see. Drain all the water out of the tank. If you don't hear any water going back in, you're golden. All right, now that we've drained the tank, we need to check it and make sure that it is not filling back up with water. So, like you're flushing it, don't hear any water rushing in, you're good. What we need to do is Go in there and drain all the water out. Best way to do it, use a sponge. It's very old fashioned, a little messy, but uh, always have rags around and a towel down to make sure you clean up your mess. It can be not so messy. It can be really messy, trust me. A lot of times the uh, flappers in there will start degrading and they'll turn black. If, you're, if it's a black rubber flapper, it gets really messy after that. But uh, I've got a nice red one in there, and it shouldn't be as bad. We'll see. So, first things first, drain the water. These low-profile units are really good, and I had to use one to get them underneath my counter. But unfortunately, it didn't leave me a whole lot of room here. So, be patient. Don't get all frustrated. And drain all the water you can. The water in your tank is as clean as the water coming out of your sink. It's the water in the bowl you have to worry about. All right, well, judging by the water that's come out of the tank, it's a little bit dirty. So we're going to get our hands a little bit dirty, but not a big deal. That's what soap and water is for, right? All right, now we've got all the water that we can out of there. We are going to open up where the valve connects to the toilet. Have this right under there, because no matter how much water you get out of the tank with a sponge, there's still going to be some in there. So your towel will catch some, but this will catch the rest. Trust me, you want to do this. Turn it, just loosen it, just all by hand. There's no really no need to get wrenches involved unless it's just out, absolutely stuck on there. happening inside there where you can't see. We've just unscrewed the water from these threads right here. So what we're going to do before we put that on is wrap this in some plumber's tape. But right now the old assembly has to come out. Now that the water has come off, there is a locking ring on the bottom down there. It's up underneath the toilet. You really can't see it from here. Most of the time you can get off by hand. Other times you just need a little expandable wrench, 
Don't put much pressure on it, it will break. It is all plastic parts under here. Something I should have told you before we started here, if you don't want it to get dirty, get it out of the way. Make sure your area is clear, your shower curtain is up out of the way, any rugs that your wife will get mad at you for getting dirty, just scoot them out of the way, not a problem. All right, here is our old one. New one will screw on just like that. Make sure we are right about the same size. And we are, so we are good. This is the adjustment knob right here. You can go up or down. The farther down it is, the lower in the tank, the water will rise. If you wanna save water, if you want a bigger flush, it's all right here on this screw. But right now, you just need to get it in there. A little plumber's grease does absolute wonders on this part right here. Any gaskets you see, this little rubber seal right here, that's going to press against the bottom inside of a toilet tank. Just get a little plumber's grease all around that. You want a good seal. The silicone does not really degrade right away. All around the rubber right there. Too much is not a bad thing when you use this stuff. It will just squish out of the way and be just fine. All right, the silicone tape. The absolute wonder of the ages as far as plumbing goes. This helps prevent leaks like you would not believe. Ask any plumber, they will always use this or something similar. You don't need a whole lot, just as long as you wrap the threads around, break it off, tighten it up. All right, this is going to stick inside there. This is gonna be hanging out of the toilet here down. This is where the water assembly will go back onto, just hand tight, not a problem. This is the water fill hose. There is what looks like a chimney, a tube up inside the tank right here. I'll try to get a good picture of it here in a little bit. This fits right down inside that tube. That's what helps the water come down on the inside of your toilet bowl. I'll, you'll see what I mean. Fit the hose inside that chimney looking thing. That's where the water will go down in. Right, the valve is now hanging out the bottom. But you're retaining that back on there. You can hear water dripping out of there. screw on the bottom of a new assembly just like that. Go on there, tighten it up hand tight and if you like help avoid some leaks and get a good seal. Take your pliers just give it a half a turn. You can hear and feel when it starts to get tight. It's 
wiggle the assembly just a little bit. Help cinch it up. Got a wrench. Just, just a little bit. Remember, these are all plastic parts. I put this on just about every gasket and seal involved in plumbing. As long as it is not going to something that you're drinking, I use the heck out of the silicone. Helps prevent leaks. Again, it's a silicone grease, it's not silicone caulking. It does wonders to help with the threads going on and to help prevent leaks. Make sure you're not cross-threading when you put this on there. It will never seal if it is. Make sure you go on straight. You get a good, nice, tight feel. And with these plastic parts, you don't have to crank, crank them down like the old school ones. All right, that feels pretty good. What you need to do is just turn this on and watch it fill. If it's overfilling, adjust that valve down. If it's underfilling, adjust that valve up. Also, watch where your connection is. If it starts leaking, if you see a, a drip starting, you need to do something about it. It'll tighten up things. Um, if, the, if it continues to leak, right around where the water connection is, you need to go ahead and get a new water connection. Sometimes you have to have a bite the bullet and spend five more bucks. You know, it's worth it, trust me. So what we're gonna do is turn the water back on, a little valve down here and see if it works. Let's give it a shot. As it's filling, I'm checking for leaks and drips. I don't see any. Let's hope it stays that way. Make sure your flapper is down and closed. Most of the time, these units are just universal. They'll work with any toilet out there. Unless it's something really, really fancy or bizarre, this should work for just about anything. Make sure you look for the ones that say universal high performance. You will not regret getting one, trust me. Don't go cheap on these, although these are pretty cheap. You can get ones that cost maybe 20 bucks. You can get ones that cost five bucks. I go right in the middle pretty much. I don't need the most expensive one out there, but uh, you don't want to cheap out on these either. So let's see if it seems to be filling up. All right, it is filled up and stopped. It is a little high. It has come right down to the very top of where the water goes down to flush toilet. So what I'm going to do is adjust it down just a little bit. couple of full turns should do it. And it is right there at a little farther. Alright, flush it. Let's see where it comes to. This is the unglamorous side of home projects. Yeah. I 
I'll say if you ever need a hobby, buy a house. You always have something to work on. Alright, so the water is coming up too high. We need to go the other way with it. So, get about three turns. Let's go the other way. One, two, three. It's back where you were. Let's go three more this way. One, two, three. And what's happening is the, the float in there is going down. So, let's try that again. <laughs> I like the a manual adjustments on these valves. It's pretty much foolproof. I've had some that had a pressure adjustment that worked by the water pressure itself. Those failed pretty quickly. I just didn't care for those and they were more expensive. Those, those are like the 20 buck ones. So I played with those, didn't like them. The manual adjustments are much better in my opinion. They're just easier, trust me. All right. It is stopped and it is about a quarter inch down below the surface of that filler tube in there. So we are golden on this thing. I don't see any leaks. Something that I do to double check in case there's any very slow leaks, get some newspaper or some newsprint of some kind, anything that wrinkles and kind of degrades a little bit when it gets the slightest bit wet. Uh, I'm sure if you've had your newspaper peed on by a dog or whatever, you'll see it all ripply looking. Uh, you can tell right away if it got wet, right? So put a little newspaper down there, watch it for a few days, make sure it stays flat and dry. But uh, otherwise we are good. We just need to put away our tools um, and get back to doing our business as usual. So, from do your damn self. They call me the jack of all trades. Don't be afraid to do it your damn self. Love you guys.